A UMS, uh, UML class diagram gives an overview of a software system by displaying classes, attributes, operations, and their relationship. So simply we can say that, in fact, this diagram displays all the classes along with their attributes and the methods and the relationship between them. So this diagram includes the class name, attributes, and operations in separate designated compartments. So now, class diagram defines the types of objects in the system and the different types of relationships that exist among them. It gives a high-level view of an application. A class can refer to another class. It can be related to another class. A class can have its objects or may, may inherit from other classes. So the classes that are the child classes, they can inherit from the parent class. First of all, class diagram. To describe the classes of an object, to show the attributes of each object, to describe the methods of each class, and to show the relationship between different entity uh, classes, right? So, in fact, it gives us a complete overview through which we can judge the uh, methods that are being used, the classes that are being used, and their attributes. So, here we have the class quotation. We can describe a class like this we have three compartments or three portions the first portion keeps the name of the class then we here define the attributes of that particular class and here we have the operations or the methods or the function so as we had concept in conceptual model so we try to concern each concept we try to convert each concept into a class this is a type of con convert each concept into a class. A class contains class name, attributes, and operations. Similarly, the attribute. An attribute is named property of a class which describes the object being modeled. So this is the class name student. And here we have the attribute name, name, address, birth date. In the class diagram, this component is placed just below the name compartment. Then we have association. If two classes in a model need to communicate with each other, there must be a link between them and that can be represented by an association or a connector. So we can see that here we have two classes and this connector, this association in fact is the relationship. Association can be represented by a line between these classes as we can, as we can see here and there can be a different kind of association. Single student can associate with multiple people. So one student can be taught by one or many. This, in fact, uh, Steric shows the many. So one student can be taught by minimum one instructor and maximum many instructors. Similarly, an instructor may teach minimum one student and maximum many. And then over here, one student can be taught by or learned from minimum one teacher and maximum many teachers. And one instructor or teacher can teach minimum one student or many students. So in this way, we can describe the association. And in the course of databases, we will study this in detail that uh, what is this? Uh, these, these, these symbols, in fact, these symbols are cordinalities and we will study the optional cordinalities cordinality, maximum cordinality and minimum cordinality, but over here it is enough that we can define in, the, in this manner the association between the entity classes. Now we have another concept that is generalization versus specialization. Here, generalization is a mechanism for combining similar classes of objects into a single more general class. So this is the concept of parent-child classes, right? So we, for example, if I say that I have two classes. Number one is 
uh, for example, college students and the other is university student. So we will say that both students are generally a single class and that is in fact the student class. So in this way we can generalize. Generalization identifies commonalities among a set of entities. These commonalities may be of attributes or behavior or both. In other words, a superclass has the most general or common attributes, operations, and relationship that may be shared with the subclasses or the child class. A subclass may have more specialized attributes and operations. So we can check over here. We have these two accounts, the saving account and the credit account. When I say that the saving and the credit card account, both are generally a bank account. So in fact, this is the process. When we move from the specific to general, this concept is known as generalization. You can see over here, this key. there is generalization is from the specific to the general. So if I say that I have a daily wager employee, a permanent employee. So we will say that permanent employee and daily wager are generally employees. So employee class becomes the parent class and these are the child class classes and these in fact inherit from the parent class. And if I have a single class that is bank account and I say that I must find out the specialized entity classes. So what will I do? I will I will try to find out the bank account can be of two types. Number one, saving account and credit card account. So I am moving from a single general class to multiple specialized classes. So here, this is known as specialization. So this is the difference between the generalization and the specialization. So generalization versus inheritance. So the first thing was generalization versus specialization. Now where generalization versus inheritance. Generalization is the term that we use to denote abstraction of common properties into a base class in general. We have studied that we take the common things from the base class, these are children, and these child classes give us the common attributes and we make a general class. So it says in this manner we make the general class. The UML diagram generalization equation is also known as inheritance. So when we talk about the generalization in UML diagram, we also we also know uh, call them the inheritance. Uh, this, this concept is known as the inheritance. When we implement generalization in a programming language, it is often called inheritance instead of generalization, right? Generalization and inheritance are the same. So these both are same, but while programming we call it inheritance, while modeling for the database we call it the generalization, and modeling it for the UML we call it again inheritance. The terminology just differs depending on the context where it is being used. So for the programming, inheritance, for the modeling in the database, generalization. So here we have another example. Here we have a class bank, ATM, customer, account. So now we can see the same symbols over here, right? So one customer can have minimum one account or maximum two accounts. One account belongs to only one customer. And over here we can find out the generalization we have current account we have saving account and both are forming an account so this is the parent class these are the uh, child classes and now in fact this diagram describes the each class its attributes and the method being used right so now this diagram is the class diagram for an ATM. so your student activity or the homework, draw a detailed class diagram for your class project. Whatever you're doing in your class project, now you will have to draw a detailed class diagram that will contain all the entity classes, all the attributes, all the methods, and then you will submit it in the next class. Thank you very much.